This is going to be a short lesson to just outline the delineation that you can make between deontological ethics versus teleological ethics. We're going to explain what both of these things mean because they're going to crop up quite a lot when we talk about, for example, the distinction between Kant's deontological theories of ethics and utilitarianism or, or consequentialism. And Essentially, these two situate themselves as polar opposites in terms of how they view what determines an ethical principle uh, to be ethical, what determines something to be moral versus immoral. But they also situate themselves in conjunction to the concept of virtue and virtue ethics. When we examine normative theories, we tend to split them into three general subcategories. Normative ethics as I've mentioned in a previous lesson, is the study of uh, systems that we can utilise to come to ethical conclusions. So what um, using a system to determine what ought to be done in, a, in any given um, problem question. And when we talk about virtue, uh, uh, normative ethics, sorry, we tend to delineate into three subcategories, one of them being deontological theories, which is what we're going to start with uh, when we actually get into some of the normative uh, processes in a few lessons time. There are then consequentialist theories, which link to things like utilitarianism, for example, and then there are virtue ethicist theories as well. So it's important that we have an understanding of these more broadly before we start to unpack them and apply these ideas to specific systems of ethics that we will uh, look at in future lessons. So the previous lesson, what we did was made another distinction. We distinguished between ethical theories uh, relating to relativist morality um, and also to absolutist morality. The difference between something being absolutist uh, in, in its moral framework versus something being relativist. And this is one delineation that you can make. But when it comes to normative ethics, we tend to make a more precise delineation when we talk, at the dis talk about the distinction between deontological theories versus teleological theories. And we'll explain what these two actually mean in this lesson. So deontology is a term essentially used to describe a basic set of ethical rules as well as normative frameworks. As I've said, when we look at, for example, meta-ethics in a, in a different set of lessons, we're not going to be actually unpacking meta-ethics as part of deontology necessarily. Deontology isn't necessarily a word that is that crops up very often when we study meta-ethics, because meta-ethics is a little bit different to normative ethics. So when we talk about deontology, we're talking about it from a normative perspective. The word itself comes, uh, if we talk about the etymology of the word, it comes from the Greek word deon, meaning duty. And this should give us a general sense of what deontology refers to from an ethical perspective. It's asking us to consider something like duty. It is the basic principle that one should act out of a sense of duty when making ethical decisions. And that is what deontology tells us. This is aligned more with the objective or absolutist of the moral frameworks that we looked at in previous lessons. According to a deontological theory, from a sort of broad overview perspective, there are certain things that are right and wrong in virtue of the fact that they relate to a certain duty. And it doesn't actually matter what the consequences of those actions are or what the outcomes of those actions may be. What is true when it comes to morality and what it comes to how one ought to act in an ethical situation relates to the certain duty that one has within a certain situation. Now, ethicists and philosophers may disagree or debate about what constitutes duty, um, what things ought to be seen as part of this theory of duty. But if you are a deontologist, you believe that your ethical frameworks are derived from a sense of duty rather than from a sense of subjectivism. And so it's more objective and absolutist when it comes to a moral framework. The idea here is that actions will be moral or immoral on the basis that there is a sense of duty to perform said actions. You will perform an action in a certain situation, given an ethical problem. You will perform an action because there is a sense of duty placed upon you in doing so because of the way in which you apply your own ethical principles. Or you, if you act in a certain way that is contrary to, to the, the, the to the principles of duty that you have established, then this may uh, indicate that you have acted immorally in a situation uh, instead. So, as I've mentioned earlier on in this lesson, uh, an example of a deontological theory or deontological ethics relates 
to Kantian ethics. Now, Kantian ethics is probably the most famous when it comes to deontological theories. And the uh, in a few lessons time, once we've gone through all of these basic principles of ethics, we're going to start to unpack Immanuel Kant and his ethical principles that he derived and his normative frameworks they established. So we're starting with Immanuel Kant and we will then move on to teleological theories, specifically um, utilitarianism. And then we will move on to virtue ethics uh, in a few lessons time. So that's what deontology tells us when it comes to normative ethics. What about teleology? Well, teleology is essentially the counterexample, the contravention of deontology. The word teleology and teleological theories and teleological ethics comes from the Greek word telos. And the word telos means end within, uh, within Greek. And the basic idea when it comes to teleology is that one can choose whether an action is moral or immoral because of... Uh, based on, sorry, the basic um, end result that we have when we relate to said action. So what is the end result that would be levied if I perform an action in a certain way? So, for example, if an action brings about more pleasure or is a more just outcome, then it is the action that is most moral. That is a different way in which we can normatively understand systems of ethics. So given a problem within ethics, given an ethical situation that uh, you might have difficulty uh, reconciling, a teleological theory or a consequentialist theory may say develop a system that examines what the consequences of an action will be if those consequences lead to a good outcome, then the action is moral. If those consequences lead to a bad outcome, then the action is immoral. Again, just like with deontology, different consequentialist theories will come to different conclusions about what ought to be judged in terms of the consequences. So from a strictly pure utilitarian perspective, the kind of utilitarianism that was developed by people like Jeremy Bentham, they argued that it's actually pleasure that uh, is the key to developing consequentialism. So the action that you ought to choose is the action that derives the most pleasure for the most amount of people. And this links with uh, Bentham's idea of hedonism. Whereas in some other instances, you might use justice or just outcomes, where the uh, most just outcome for the most number of people is the action that is most moral. That is a different way in which you can understand it. These are two different understandings of normative ethics, but they fit within this subcategory of teleology or consequentialism. So that is the um, the way in which we understand the two major theories of ethics. OK, and consequentialism, what ought to be known, is associated more with relativist moral philosophy, as you can probably understand. What is a good and a bad thing to do is completely subjective because it only depends on the consequences of the action itself. You could perform an action in exactly the same way in two different circumstances, but if they create two completely different consequences then that can lead to whether or not the what the first instance was moral and the second instance was immoral even though it's the same action with a teleological theory this is perfectly um, reconcilable with a consequentialist ethics this is reconcilable but when it comes to deontology if there is a duty to perform said action then that duty will always be moral or immoral based on however the consequences are at that time so as you can see Teleology and consequentialist ethics links more with relativist moral philosophy and deontologically, uh, deontology sorry, and duty-based ethics relates more to absolutist uh, moral philosophy. Now, of course, there are there is the third of these different uh, ethical normative frameworks that we tend to look at. Um, there is also a fourth that we can examine as well. But the, the three main ones are the deontological theories, consequentialist theories, and then also virtue theories or virtue ethics. There is also the concept the concept of situation ethics, which is a, a another normative framework. But for the most part, people would delineate three major normative frameworks for moral philosophy they will talk about consequentialism they will talk about deontology and then they will talk about virtue ethics all three are what we are going to spend essentially the rest of these lessons unpacking and examining in more detail and then applying to certain situations